But we want to we wanna honor moms today. And, and as we honor moms today, we're going to look at the mother of Jesus himself, uh, Mary, who, who was chosen by God to do this uh, most amazing human task of, of raising uh, the Son of God, the, the Messiah, the one who'd give his life uh, for us. And we're going to see what, what God says to and about, about moms today, as well as what God uh, says to us about how he loves us and how he, he cares for us, how he uh, comes for us, how he grows us and watches over us. We're going to look today at, at how our God is fully dedicated to us as his kids. And that's the name of uh, today's sermon. The, the title of the message is Dedicated. I want to start off with uh, the book of Hebrews, this amazing passage in Hebrews 6, if you want to turn with me. I'm going to, I'm going to read from the message paraphrase because I think it, it captures it so well today. But it's this passage about how God promises to bring hope. Even if we don't see it right now, we're not living it right now, he promises to bring hope. And, it, and it's an amazing passage about what he guarantees that promise on. It says this in, in verse 13 of Hebrews 6. When God made his promise to Abraham, he backed it up to the hilt, putting his own reputation on the line. He said, I promise that I'll bless you with everything I have. Bless and bless and bless. Abraham stuck it out and got everything that had been promised to him. When people make promises, they guarantee them by appeal to some authority above them so that if there's any question they'll make good on the promise, the authority will back them up. When God wanted to guarantee his promises, he gave his word, a rock-solid guarantee. God can't break his word. And because his word cannot change, the promise is likewise unchangeable. We who have run for our very lives to God have every reason to grab the promised hope with both hands and never let go. It's an unbreakable spiritual lifeline, reaching past all appearances right to the very presence of God, where Jesus, running on ahead of us, has taken up his permanent post as a high priest for us in the order of Melchizedek. God guarantees that he will come through for us with what he says he will give us, which is really everything. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your written word. I thank you that we can read it we can trust it because you're a God who never lies. You are faithful. You guarantee it by yourself, and you're the, you're the best guarantee ever. You're the best one to back it up. And I pray that today we would, we would hear about you as a dedicated, committed for us God, a God who, who comes for us, who makes a way for us, and, and who leads us uh, to, to everything you have for us. And, and, and Father, may we hear about your son Jesus today. Holy Spirit, as you speak to each of us today, help us just to respond to you, whatever that may be, whether it's uh, stretching our hand out in faith for the first time or, or stepping into the promises you have or, or committing to, to, to do something different or own something that we need to take ownership of. Help us to respond to you. And in all of it, I pray you get the glory, Father God, for, for you're the only one worthy of our praise and our glory and honor. In your name we pray. Amen. So with all that moms do, and I've seen it over and over, they, they often feel this great pressure to get everything right, to be perfect, to, to raise kids so they don't screw them up, to help their cute little boy not be a couch dweller at age 25, to help their beautiful princess make right choices along the way, especially when it comes to that guy. There's this, there's this pressure. There's a lot of pressure they place on themselves. Very often they, they do, they heap it on themselves. It's not something that, that God gives them or tells them, hey, you gotta be perfect. They, they, they just step into this because there's this responsibility they have. So we wanna honor moms today and remove the pressure at the same time. See how God takes all the pressure on himself. So there's no fear or there's no worry in what we do as a mom because we, we're gonna see who God really is for all of us. So looking at Mary, the mother of Jesus, she wrestled, she wondered, she worried. She was confused and had some doubts and she believed beyond what she saw with her own eyes or even understood in her own heart. So you're not alone, moms. When you look at that little child of yours and you're like, how are they ever gonna make it in this world? Who are they ever gonna become? What, 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 the, look at the choices they're making when, when, you, when you walk through that, know that, that our God understands what you're going through, that even as 
Jesus lived a perfect life, Mary still walked through things because she didn't have perfect knowledge. So we're going to look at a mom's life today, starting with celebration. I mean, moms are great at celebrating life, aren't they? They just do such a good job of making the big things matter and making the little things big. I mean, look at the big stuff, like high school grads, they're coming up now, all the graduations. I mean, they're there, they're cheering them on, they're filming everything. You go, girl, you did it, you're the smartest, most amazing, most dedicated, most committed girl on the planet. And every girl's thinking, my mom's saying the same, all our moms are saying the same thing, it's because they celebrate you. Moms are also great at celebrating the little things. You sat on the potty. Way to go. Here's M&M's and Skittles. Meanwhile, dad's over there going, hey, I sit on this couch all day and all I get is yelled at? Finley didn't do a single thing and he gets M&M's and Skittles. Where's my Skittle? He didn't even try. I mean, I'm not trying, but at least I'm clicking the changer on the TV. Moms, you, you even celebrate before your kids get here, right? I mean, think about it. Look at the baby announcements that we have these days. I mean, I mean, check some of these out. Here we go. They, they use cheesy 90s pop ice, uh, rock icons, rap icons. Ice, ice, baby. Collaborate and listen. Dun, dun, nobody got that. Ice, ice, baby. Okay, what about the next one? Moms can be mean, too. Eviction notice for the, for the kid. You're, you're done, kid. Man, get out of the crib. A few months now, there's a new one coming in. They also do some really cool videos. Check out this next video here, how, how moms love to celebrate. I mean, who'd ever thought that you come on Mother's Day and get Vanilla Ice and Justin Bieber in the same message? I mean, come on. All things are redeemable. I don't know if they're going to be redeemed. That's their choice. But we can redeem all things through Jesus. I firmly believe that one of the reasons that the moms are so good at celebrating their kids is because there's this, there's this God built in that he places inside of a mom. That there is a real plan and a purpose for their child. Like Mary, you just, you believe there's something special about your child. And I get it. She was visited by an angel. Moms, I, you probably didn't have an angel show up. But, but there had to be some stuff she struggled with as a human being. Yet at the same time, she believed that angel. I mean, she didn't have perfect foreknowledge, even though she had a, you know, a visitor from heaven. She was a little confused. Luke 1, 34, she's basically like, um... I'm still a virgin, so, I mean, that, that's where she was with it all. But then a few verses later in Luke 1, 38, here's what she says to the angel. With confidence, she says, I get it. I'm a servant of the Most High God. May it be so, just like you said. May this come to pass. I don't understand it all. I don't have perfect knowledge. I may never fully get it, but may it be so, because, uh, because I'm going to trust that God chose me for something. There's this built in inside of her that, that yeah, this, this can be because God, I, I trust you in this. I mean, moms celebrate their kids so well. Dads, they celebrate with, you know, birthdays with, oh, you're still here? <laughs> Give me some cake, you know? But moms, they party it up. Every birthday is a party. It's like, he just, he's seven. What? Seven? He's seven! And dad's like, okay, what's the cake taste like, you know? And sometimes, Circumstances make it hard to celebrate your kid. I, I understand that. God understands that. He understands what you go through. He understands what it's like to, to have a child not act right. Even Mary faced uh, celebrating in the midst of not quite knowing what's going on. I mean, she's a, an unwed, pregnant teenager holding the Son of God in her womb. She doesn't understand everything. Yet, she trusts God in the midst of it all. She's, she's visiting, at, at the end of Luke chapter 1, she's visiting her cousin Elizabeth, who happens to be John the Baptist's mom. And Elizabeth basically says to her, Mary, you're blessed because God chose you. 
He, he gave you this awesome responsibility to carry and then birth and then raise the Messiah, the Savior of mankind. You're, you're going to raise him up and then he's going to die for humanity to redeem all of those who, who say yes to life in him. And Elizabeth's encouraging her, but can you imagine how challenging that would be to hear? And look at Mary's response. She responds with a song in Luke 1, verse 46. This is her response. Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. She's celebrating. How my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he took notice of this lowly servant girl. And from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one is holy. And he's done great things for me. I don't get it all. But I get that he's good and I get that he's faithful. And if he decides this is the way, I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to trust him. And, and mom, sometimes it might not look like that big of a deal for you, the little things you're celebrating. But little things are big. Kids remember those. They remember how you hung that, that drawing on the fridge. How you collected everything that they did for all those years in children's church on Sunday. And you put them in a file folder. And every once in a while you, you pulled one out and you kept it on the fridge. But you kept them all. They remember all the times you brought them broken shells from the beach or a rock they found out in a field. It's just a rock from the field. Mom, a scorpion ran on this here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I love it. I mean, look at our God, how he shows us the way. There's this passage in Zephaniah chapter 3, and and it's an interesting book if you read Zephaniah because it's all about this coming judgment and how, how, how bad Israel's doing and you better repent and you're going to pay the price for your, your sins, so repent. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punish those who are against you as well. And it's this whole book about this. In the very end of the book of Zephaniah, it's only three chapters, God speaks faithfully about the future. They're still living in rebellion, yet he speaks this over them. Zephaniah 3, verse 14. This is God talking. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart. He's saying, be happy, celebrate, O daughter of Jerusalem. For the Lord will remove his hand of judgment and will disperse the armies of your enemy. And the Lord himself, the king of Israel, will live among you. At last your troubles will be over. And you will never again fear disaster. On that day... The announcement to Jerusalem will be, cheer up, Zion. Don't be afraid, for the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty Savior. He will take delight in you with gladness. With his love, he will calm all your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. I will gather you who mourn for the appointed festivals. You will be disgraced no more. And I will deal severely with all of those who have oppressed you. He's saying, I'll get rid of your enemies. I will save the weak and the helpless ones. I'll bring together those who are chased away. I'll give glory and fame to my former exiles, wherever they've been mocked and shamed. And on that day, I will gather you together and bring you home again. I'll bring home the homeless. I'll bring you back home. I'll give you a good name, a name of distinction among all nations of the earth as I restore your fortunes before their very eyes. I, the Lord, have spoken. You see, he's talking about, I'm gonna sing joyfully over you. That's who I am, and that's what I do. Even in the midst of your rebellion now, I'm singing joyfully over, over you because I, I believe and I know where you will go. I know what you will end up choosing. He's a God that we can have faith in, but he's also a God of faith because he banks it on himself. God the Father, he's the one who, who holds his daughter and sings joyfully over her. He doesn't say I sing joyfully over her when she's making me happy. I hold her because she's my daughter. Like a, like a loving mom just cradles a child and, and sings out in love over them. God sings over us simply because we're loved. No other reason. He sings over us because we're loved, not because we earn something. Even in the midst of our rebellion, he calms us down. And he cares for us. He calls us to newness of life and, and fulfillment in him. And maybe you're in here today and, and you never made that decision to, to have that newness of life, to be absolutely fulfilled in Jesus. You're like, man, I, I've come to church a few times. I've just started coming to church. Uh, I'm here with my family because we're celebrating someone in my family, my mom, my aunt, grandma, whatever it is. 
but, but I don't follow Jesus. And maybe the Holy Spirit is moving on you right now and saying, come, come home. Come home. In the midst of where you are, not following me, I'm coming for you. I'm calling you home. I want to celebrate over you. I want to save you. I want to give you a, a hope and a future. I want to give you a purpose. I want to show you everything I've designed you for. And you're like, okay, I like that. I want that. How do I get that? Here's how you get it. You say yes. That's it, Scott? Yeah. Romans tells us you believe it in your heart and you speak it out with your mouth and you will be saved. Just say, yeah, Jesus, I believe in you. I don't understand it all. I don't have fullness of knowledge of everything about you, but I do want that and I believe that you are who you say you are. And so I want to follow you. That's where you start in following Jesus, just saying yes. You earn nothing and you do nothing other than, yeah, I'll accept that free gift of fulfilled life here and eternal life forever. So this opportunity is before you right now. All it takes is to admit you need Jesus and you want Jesus. The God who became a man and came for you from Mary herself as a human being. He'll save you. He'll forgive you. He'll free you. Just say yes to him right now and you're saved. It's the place to start with eternal life. And in the same way that that passage in Zephaniah tells us that God delights in us and he delights over us, Luke 15.10 also talks about his rejoicing over those of us who say yes to life in him. It tells us in Luke 15.10 that every time uh, a person repents, whether it's for the first time or we just repent of something that, that the Holy Spirit convicts us of, that heaven rejoices. That's, a, that's kind of a crazy thought. Not only for every person who comes to know Jesus, but for every person who simply repents, who says, oh, Holy Spirit, I get it. I was, I was mean to my child today. I was, I was mean to my dad today. I was, I was a, a jerk to my boss this week. I, I repent of that. Every time heaven rejoices. That's a God who celebrates us. Seeing who we're made to be, who he's designed us to be. He loves you where you are, and he'll take you where he wants you to be. He'll do it all. All you have to do is let him. I mean, Zephaniah is telling us here that, that we have this God who is literally with us. Jesus was proof that God wanted us so badly that he became one of us to save us so we could always be with him. And, and this saving God, God he, he dwells with us and delights in us at the same time for those who trust him. And moms, I totally get that life is full. I totally get that your kids are not perfect. God gets that too. I mean, you might want to say, Scott, I understand that, that God celebrates us and I appreciate the shout out, but it's hard to keep this up. It's hard to live out what you're saying that we do. Because you know what? Kids in life aren't perfect, right? Struggle happens. A mom's life can have a lot of frustration in it. Right? No amens. You don't want to point. You don't want to point out your kid. Somewhere along the way, your kids are going to mess up. And, and like I said earlier, some of you are like, "My kid's messing up right now. I just don't want to go in there and get him." So send your husband. But know this: your kid's going to mess up, and that's not on you, mom. That's not on you. You may. Bear that. You may want to bear that. You may realize, well, I mess up too, but that's not on you. Some of them will have failing grades this week on report cards. That's not on you, Mom. Their bikes will crash right into your SUV or flower garden. Your kids will steal the Easter candy that sits above the fridge when you're not home, right? I'm calling out my son. That, ha that happened to your pastor they got busted by the grandma who walked in the door at the exact same time they were stealing chocolate eggs. It was awesome. I love it. And they paid a price for it. But the enemy hates you, and he's going to try to heap on you lies and accusations. He wants you to believe you're ruining your child's life. You might even begin to think, I'm not cut out for this, God. You chose the wrong woman. Those are lies and schemes. 
I get that you're not perfect, but those are not truths coming from a perfect holy God who chose you to be a mom. And he said, of all the things I could have you do at this period of uh, time in your life, and for this person, you're the best choice. He just designed it. He's sovereign and he's perfect in that. He does not make mistakes and things don't slip by him. And whether you want them to or not, moms, your kids are going to help sanctify you. You know, my, my sister's older than me, so she made my mom a mom for the first time, but I sanctified my mom. In fact, she should give me a gift for being such a saint now because she learned through the years. I was a pill. I was a punk. I was trouble. My mom, I mean, she used to pray, Lord, just help Scotty stay alive or at least help us find the body when he does go. You know, it, it was not an easy thing. Think about Mary, how hard it was to raise the Son of God, knowing sometimes, not knowing sometimes, but then even knowing what that meant. And we even know of one story where she actually got frustrated with Jesus. He never made a mistake. He never sinned. But we have a story in Luke 2 where where she gets frustrated with him. We read this story of possibly one of the worst things that could happen to a mom on planet Earth, the day Mary lost God. Can you imagine losing God? That'd be horrible. I mean, think about it. Most of us, we've forgotten uh, or misplaced or lost a kid a time or two, right? Anyone? Not that I have, but you, okay. But, and, and, you know, most of the time when I lose a kid, I go over the next aisle in Walmart or HEB and I find him. It wasn't like Mary could go the next aisle over. They actually lost Jesus for three days. They lost God for three days. It took them a day to realize God wasn't even with them. And they're like, where's God? They were traveling back from Jerusalem. And they're like, he's not with you. No, he's not with you. He's not with cousin Earl. No. And they go back and they can't find him. Three days to find God. And we read this story in Luke 2, verses 41 through 52. They finally find him in the temple. He's teaching the teachers. And Mary's like, boy, what have you done to us? We went half crazy looking for you. Do you know what it feels like to lose God? You're killing me, Jesus. And he's like, no, in 21 years you're going to kill me. No, just kidding. Uh, Jesus didn't say that. But preteen Jesus, he's 12. Here's his response. And remember, it wasn't a sin. I don't have a lot of time here on earth, Mom. I have to be about the Father's business. You didn't think to look for me here? (laughs) Now, he didn't sin, so I don't know what I'd do. My kid's like, you didn't think? That I would do, be here, Dad? I'm like, oh, don't tell me what I thunk. No, 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 no. You ever tell a mom? You ever watch your child tell a mom, you didn't think? Oh, man, get out of the house. Just leave him alone. But Jesus didn't sin. He just said, I, I don't have a lot of time. And I'm of age. I can start teaching these things. I've been taught well. And so this is where I've got to be. But Mary's frustrated. Mary gets you. God, he doesn't get frustrated with it because he's perfect, but he knows what it's like to raise us who mess up. Luke tells us that Mary and Joseph, they didn't quite understand it all. Possibly because they were still in that mental recovery state of when you do finally find your child or your daughter is safely in a hospital bed or, or you pull your son Kean out of Pastor Rodney's pool. Um, that happened as well. Uh, our four-year-old decided he'd try to walk on water, and he can't. Rodney's pool's not made that way. So he went down, and I, my wife moved like lightning. I'm like, what? Underwater? Where? And she's like in the water, out of the water, jeans, everything. She was, I, I don't know how she got in and out. So it was like, pow, pow, you know? But they're in that mental recovery state. And, and they weren't understanding it all. And Luke tells us that, that Mary, the mother of Joseph, the one that was fully committed to to raise Jesus to be a man, knowing yet not fully understanding that he would die for us, that she stored these things deep in her heart like only a mom can do. She got it and she didn't get it. But she put it in there like a treasure to to take take a hold of later. And and verse 51 of Luke 2 tells us this, that, that Jesus went back with them And he was obedient, and he grew physically and spiritually. He found favor with God the Father and with man as he he grew up in that household. Mom, you won't always get your kid. 
He won't always understand. But know this promise from God. Raise them to know him well. Love them well yourself. And whether it comes sooner or later, something will happen that brings fruit to it. The frustration might be school. It might be a career choice. It might be a lifestyle. It might be the way that he or she raises their kids now. But commit to raise them with truth, with love and grace and talking a lot about Jesus. And God will be working in them and on them. Plus, you need to know this truth, moms. God loves your child more than you ever will. In one moment, he loves your child more than you could in a lifetime. And this is where moms get to trust God in the midst. Do what David says in Psalm 55, 22. Cast your cares on the Lord and let him sustain you. Because he says, I'll never let the righteous be shaken. So I get you're going to have cares. Cast them on God. He's like, throw them hard at me. I'm a big God. I can take it. And you will either see what he's up to or you'll be given a supernatural trust of what you cannot see at all. And finally, as we round out this, the, the whole point of the message is, is about a mom's life and the dedication they have to us, paralleling that with the dedication we have from a, a faithful God. Are there any more dedicated humans on the planet than moms? I mean, come on, really. Aren't they just so committed and dedicated? I mean, think about what they're, they're fully committed to in spite of how brutal it can be. School plays, right? I mean, they're, they're horrid. Not, not here in the hill country in Austin or Dallas, but those things are brutal to go to. Some of you are like, hey, I'm the teacher in, involved in putting them on. It's not on you, teach, okay? They're just little kids. But moms, they, they get so excited, they go, and they seem to love it, and they get all amped up about it, and dads are like, I'll watch the baby. I'll change the diaper, wash the laundry, and do the dishes. And mom's like, good, I can't wait to go. And you're like, what, did she hit her head today? But moms, your, your dedication's off the charts. And for that, we say, wow, how, and thank you. Because that's an amazing thing that you can just be so amped up about your child with even the things that for most of humanity might seem brutal. And our God, this is who he is. He gets amped up about us. He gets excited over us. It's his character. Zephaniah told us in that passage we read that it's his character to be there for us in spite of us and celebrate us. He dances over us with joy. Hebrews confirms his dedication to us, the passage we read. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, we have a full time for us God who will never fail us. Never. He cannot help but come through for us all the time. It's the very nature of God to create a way for us, to teach us the way, and to make sure we can navigate the way. He's the full package deal. He's like, I'm going to make you, then I'm going to save you, I'm going to show you what to do, I'm going to help you do what you need to do, and I'm going to make sure you're there. I'm there all along the way, and at the very end to cheer you on when you cross the finish line. He just does it all. That's just who he is. There is no, no being that has ever been that is, even comes close to how for us he is. Deuteronomy 7, we read this beautiful passage as we wrap up today. God has given us the Ten Commandments and tell, told us the way to live. He, he calls the people into community, which I highly encourage you to do. That's why we have real life groups. That's why we do spiritual formations so you can be called into greater community here. And then he's telling them that I'm going to do everything that I've told you I would do to secure that, that you make it all the way through. The plan I have will come to pass. And then this is how he backs it up in Deuteronomy 7, verse 7. It says, The Lord did not set his heart on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other nations. For you were the smallest of all nations. It was nothing you and I did. Because he's talking to us still. Rather, it was simply that the Lord loves you, and he was keeping the oath he had sworn to your ancestors, still our ancestors. That is why the Lord rescued you with such a strong hand from your slavery and from the oppressive hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is a faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations, and he lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commands. 
And then he follows it up with, uh, or we can follow it up with, with this passage in Numbers 23, 19 about the faithfulness of our God. Where he says, God is not a man, so he does not lie. He's not human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Nope. Has he ever promised and not carried it through? Nope. He's a perfect God who is completely dedicated to us. He is there for us throughout our, our messes and our mistakes and our growing pains. He celebrates us with singing. Heaven celebrates every time you and I are convicted by the Holy Spirit and repent of something and celebrates big time every time a lost person says yes to life in Jesus. That's the kind of God we have. And I think he has placed an aspect of that in moms to be able to walk really that same road and to celebrate and to walk through the doubts and the frustrations and then ultimately just be this most dedicated being on planet earth for their kids. Would you stand right now? We're going to go into a time of worshiping him with one more song. And in this time of worship, if you need prayer for anything, maybe you're a mom and you're like, man, I, I just... I haven't really been there like I should for my child, or you want to pray for your child, or whatever it is you want. Mom, you come up. If you just want somebody to, to love on you and, and pray for you, we'll do that. Maybe you said yes to life in Jesus today for the first time, and you just want to come up and, and worship him up at the altar. Maybe you're, you're just struggling with something in life, health, relationships, uh, just some kind of emotional state you're in, and you just want people to, to, to pray for you, or you just want to kneel up here and pray and, and, and kind of present that to God yourself, you, you come up during this next song. In fact, I'm going to ask the, any elders and former elders that are here along with your spouses, I'm going to ask them to actually come up here and just, just kind of spread out up here. And, and if you want someone to pray for you, you're going to be able to just to walk right up to them. So elders, young, young, you and your spouses can make your way up. Pastors, if you're in here... Uh, you can make your way up too. We just want to be able to receive you if you want prayer for anything. We want to be able to attach our faith to, to the faith that you're bringing up here and just to, just to bless you and pray for you. And then if you just like to pray by yourself, you just come up here and find a, an empty spot and you just pray. All right? So I'm going to pray. I'll have the elders be right down there and, and just receive people. Um, so I'm going to pray. And uh, you make your way up. You respond to the Holy Spirit. And then we're going to worship him. And, uh, and worship a God worth celebrating who says you're worth celebrating. So let's go to prayer. Father, I thank you so much for who you are. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to us right now, that you would put it on our hearts to respond to you right now, whatever it is you have, wh whether we stay where we are seated or whether we come up to the altar, I pray you help us just to respond to you. I thank you for being a God that celebrates us, that is fully committed to us throughout our, our mistakes. Uh, even before we know you, you loved us and that you are dedicated to see us through to the very end for all that you have for us. Pray a blessing over this congregation today, over everyone in this room. Pray that walls would fall down today and that those who need prayer would, would step forward and allow faithful men and women to pray with them for you to come through in their lives. You are worthy of our worship. You are a faithful God and we will glorify you now in our midst. In your name we pray, amen.